The KXAN News Podcast is sponsored by Shelf Genie. Thousands flocked to Waco for former President Donald Trump's first rally for his latest run for the White House. Why he chose Central Texas. Dozens are dead and towns demolished after a powerful tornado in Mississippi. A live report coming up. And it was a fantastic start to the weekend. How long this warm, sunny weather lasts coming up. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Mike Rush. Around 20,000 people are in Waco tonight for the kickoff rally of former President Donald Trump's re-election campaign for 2024. Our Capitol correspondent Monica Madden is in Waco with why Trump chose to start the campaign in the Lone Star State. Well, this part of the state is still considered to be strong Trump country. We're here in McLennan County, where the former president won 60% of the vote in both 2016 and 2020. Now, it is significant that he chose to be in Texas for his real big official campaign launch event rather than his primary residence of Florida, where he faces a strong potential challenge from Governor Ron DeSantis. Thousands of supporters have been waiting in lines for hours to see the former president. Police say they're expecting upward of 20,000 people here. So far, Trump only faces two official Republican challengers for president, but perhaps his most formidable challenger is someone who hasn't announced a bid yet, but is a name we've heard a lot from Republicans here this Saturday. Uh, DeSantis definitely could probably beat Biden, but if I had my pick, I want Donald Trump. If he was on a ticket with Donald Trump, that that's a a win-win all the way around. He doesn't have the same level of popularity amongst the conservative grassroots, at least not yet anyways. Now this rally comes on the heels of potential legal issues for Trump. He claims that he would get arrested on Tuesday over a possible indictment for 2016 payments to adult film actor Stormy Daniels. Trump denies all wrongdoing in that case. We'll see if he talks about that during his speech coming up and we'll have more on that later tonight. In Waco, Monica Madden, back to you. And the former president took the stage a little over five minutes ago. In other news this evening, Homeland Security investigators say they are looking into possible human smuggling after migrants were found suffocating in a train near Uvalde yesterday. Two men in the group of 17 migrants died. They were from Honduras. Border Patrol agents stopped the train yesterday about 11 miles east of Uvalde after a 911 caller reported there were numerous undocumented migrants suffocating inside a train car. Homeland Security says there were 15 men and two women in the group. Some were taken to area hospitals. In a statement, Union Pacific said it was deeply saddened by the incident and is cooperating with authorities to figure out how all of this happened. Well, you may remember our report this week about the deadly Candida auris fungus spreading across the U.S. Well, now some hospitals are reporting success in killing it by using a UV ray robot. A study by NetCare Hospital says the Zenex Light Strike robot is 99.6% effective at killing the fungus. The Light Strike utilizes intense bursts of pulsed UV light to quickly deactivate bacteria, fungi, and viruses on surfaces. Sales of the devices skyrocketed during the pandemic. As a result, Zenex increased its manufacturing capacity and has robot inventory available now to assist healthcare facilities. Going in depth now, the Candida auris fungus first appeared in Japan in 2009, and after that initial case, it showed up in several locations across the world simultaneously. It was first reported in the U.S. in 2016, and from then through 2021, there were over 3,000 reported clinical cases. First warning weather with meteorologist Sean Kelly. Happy Saturday evening, everyone. Boy, was it a fantastic day out there today. Temperatures well above average into the 80s. We're still sitting nice and pretty with temperatures right now here in Austin. 82 degrees, a live look outside, not a cloud out there. Still dealing with that low humidity, comfortable conditions out there. Going to be a fantastic evening if you're heading out to dinner, getting ready to maybe spend uh, some time with your friends or family downtown. 75 in Land Passes, 78 in Burnett. Still very warm in Horseshoe Bay at 80 degrees, 83 in Lakeway, 79 in Georgetown. Further out towards the east, very warm as well with temperatures into the upper 70s and low 80s. Hey, if you're heading out to Q2 Stadium for Austin FC, uh, going to be dealing with uh, temperatures again, very comfortable, reasonable, mainly clear skies, dipping down through uh, 9 p.m. into the upper 60s. And again, for the final Dell match play for tomorrow, again, temperatures going to be well 
comfortable, well above normal into the 80s once again. Rain chances, though, back in the forecast here as we make our way to the start of the work week and all week long. We'll talk about how much rain we could see, more of the timing, and the next chance for some strong to severe storms that's coming up in First Warning Weather. Thanks, Sean. About two dozen people are confirmed dead after a powerful tornado swept through Mississippi last night. <laughs> Dozens of others were also injured. Stacy Jacobson joins us now live in Silver City, Mississippi, to tell us more about that. And Stacy, just devastating out there. What are you seeing? Yeah, well, this is a really tight knit community here in Silver City. It's about 300 people. They say it's the kind of town where everyone knows everyone, which tends to happen when you have that few people living in such close quarters. And they say that the tornado ripped through last night. It only took about 10 seconds to cause the damage that you see here. People who live here tell me that there used to actually be a mobile home right here behind where this red car is parked. And you can see that is totally gone. You can see all the debris that has blown away behind it. It's really hard to tell what in there used to be the mobile home. There's just so many things, appliances, toilets, uh, home insulation, clothing just ripped apart. Um, and we've seen throughout the day people walking through looking for some of their things. Um, but the people who live in the the woman who lives in the mobile home here, she was able to to ride out the storm in her daughter's home, which is right here next door. Uh, you can see all the windows have been blown out. The roof sustained a lot of damage, but they went to an interior bathroom. In fact, we walked through their home. There was only one room that was untouched in the inside of their house, and it's a bathroom that had no windows. And that's where they were able to ride out the storm with their 11-year-old granddaughter, and thankfully they were all okay. But this is an area where they are grieving for three of their neighbors. Uh, more than 20 people statewide killed here in Mississippi, and there is a massive relief effort underway. They're trying to find shelter for families. There are a lot of people, families, children that have been left homeless. We were over at this command center earlier today where they're giving out food, diapers, toiletries. They say they are looking for more donations here in Silver City, and the one thing that they're really asking for that they say they need are tarps things that they can use to cover their homes because it's expected to rain in the coming days and they want people to be able to protect what little of their property they have left. So that's here in Humphreys County, Mississippi. That's what they are saying they, they need if anyone has any means to, to get that to them. Otherwise, they're of course asking for prayers and for people to, to keep them in their thoughts. We're reporting live in Silver City. I'll send it back to you. Thanks, Stacey. Just a monumental effort for a monumental tragedy. Appreciate your reporting out there. Well, still to come, how a local community partnered with the city to light the way for more safety in their neighborhood. That's coming up. The need for more lighting in some Austin neighborhoods has been top of mind recently, especially in areas where people have gone missing. Jayla Washington shows us how one community was able to get more lighting at one of its parks and why it's a relief for neighbors. Here in the Northeast District Park, a lot of neighbors like Miss Joan out about using the trail to walk their pups or just come out here in general to enjoy it. But they say it was really, really dark. That's why this right here is just one of the five new lights that's been installed. It's taken neighbors several years to make this happen, and they've gone through countless dark nights feeling unsafe. The African American Wellness Alliance was the main group advocating for this. They went through the Parks and Rec Department first since it owns and maintains this Austin Park. From there, the Alliance was able to get funding through a city neighborhood partnering program. Crime hasn't really been an issue out here, but neighbors say there is an issue with homeless people who roam the area. There are a lot of families who come out here with their kids, so they are happy now to have a little more peace of mind. Long time coming. Long time coming. So I actually I hold yoga classes out here, free yoga classes, and sometimes we have an evening class, and we have to um, end our yoga session just a little bit early so people have enough time to make it to their cars in a safe manner. Our role and our goal is to just make the park uh, more neighborhood friendly, more usable, and to make sure that the neighborhood is connecting, and, and we're going to be supporting the park long term in that partnership. And the Public Works Department tells me majority of neighbors out here had to be on board, so they did go out door to door to actually survey everyone to make sure they were okay with it, which they were today. Hi! Was really about just bringing the community together out here, having a good time, involving everyone and reminding everyone how special this park is. I'm 
reporting at the Northeast District Park, Jayla Washington, KXAN News. 6.13 is the time and it was a beautiful day today. Still a perfect evening out there, well above average. We reached a high temperature today of 83 degrees, a low of 51. How long will this warm weather last? I'll let you know coming up. This KXAN News Podcast is brought to you by Shelf Genie. I'm Rosie Newberry from KXAN Studio 512. Considering replacing your kitchen cabinets? Struggling to find or reach things? Go to shelfgenie.com slash Austin. Shelf Genie designs custom pull-out shelves for your existing cabinets, adding convenience and value to the most used room in your home. Shelf Genie custom pull-out shelves, everything in reach. First warning weather with meteorologist Sean Kelly. Happy Saturday evening, everyone. Hopefully you were able to get outside and enjoy the beautiful day. Another one in the books here, all thanks to that low, dry air, comfortable humidity and the winds that we were dealing with out of the northwest. That does, however, change here through the next 24 hours. The winds again go from the northwest to more out of the south tomorrow, and that will set the stage for the humidity at least briefly increasing all the way through Monday. But look at this, another cold front moves in Monday and into Tuesday. That'll bring us one full day of low comfortable humidity before it ramps back up Wednesday and Thursday. It's that time of the year where the humidity is the big story of the forecast and we start to see some rain chances as well, which we have. We'll show you that here coming up. 79 in Cameron. It's a comfortable 82 degrees here in Austin. 80 in Dripping Springs, a little bit cooler in Lamp Pass. It's there at 75, 77 in Fredericksburg. Absolutely beautiful out there. Full on sunny sky. If you've yet to step outside, please get outside and enjoy the evening. Winds again becoming calm right now. And they will calm here uh, through the majority of the states for the remainder of the evening and overnight. And look at these temperatures. If you have any dinner plans, maybe you're going to be going for a walk or just hanging out on the patio. Temperatures cool off there into the upper 60s. We do get a little bit chilly after midnight as temperatures dip closer to the upper 50s. For right now, again, all across the state, clear skies, no rain out there. Tomorrow, here's the deal. We have a low 10% chance for a spot shower from Austin and especially out towards the east. So we'll watch out for that for Sunday. Another low 10% chance for some spot showers Monday, again into Tuesday. Wednesday, about a 20% chance of rain. Another chance of rain Thursday. It's that time of the year where spring-like temperatures return, and so do those rain chances and even that strong to severe storm risk. We'll be watching out for that. Thursday evening and into Friday. How much rain do we pick up through Thursday morning? Not that much, a few hundredths of an inch. You factor in that severe storm threat Thursday night to Friday, maybe picking up over a quarter of an inch of some beneficial rain. Allergens definitely in full swing. Oak is very high. Molds showing up under the scope on the high side as well. 55 degrees for a low overnight. So with the dry air in place, those temperatures do cool off pretty nicely here. And then we're right back up into the uh, 80s tomorrow. We'll start to see increasing clouds, though, uh, into the afternoon again. That 10% chance of rain if you're heading out to Coda tomorrow for NASCAR. 80 degrees for your Monday, cooler temperatures into Tuesday and Wednesday, and then we warm back up Thursday and Friday with increasing rain chances. This is KXAN Sports, brought to you by Thomas J. Henry. All right, they call it March Madness, as we all know, but one more win for Texas men's basketball. They'll be playing into April. Now it's Longhorns versus the Miami Hurricanes tomorrow in Kansas City, where we once again find our Jonathan Thomas. And Jonathan, Longhorns just keep on rolling no matter what's in front of them. Yeah, absolutely, Noah. Today we found uh, Texas when we were getting ready to talk to them, a loose, confident group after beating Xavier by double digits last night in the Sweet 16 and make their first appearance in the Elite Eight also in 15 years. Uh, big question, though, is whether Dylan DeSue can play tomorrow. They knew he wouldn't be able to go last night, but he still started and left after a few minutes. Christian Bishop stepped up and scored 18 points, had nine rebounds. They'll also need another big game from Bishop and freshman forward Dylan Mitchell in order to make up for DeSue's absence in the paint. For us, it's just day-to-day -day and just everybody's body is different, um, and so we'll see what happens. It's not something that can uh, be made worse or anything like that. It's really just about pain and um, 
just the ability to go. I say just play athletic. You know, that's what RT pulled me to the side this morning and just said, just play athletic. You know, make plays, run the floor, rebound, block shots, just just play athletic. And he took me back to he, he took me back to some other games we had in the Big 12 where I was just playing very athletic, playing very freely. And he said he just wants that for me, you know, come tomorrow night. Yeah, they're going to need a big effort from Dylan Mitchell and several others to hold off of a very athletic Miami team. Now, DeSue says he hopes to feel better and he'll have the opportunity to play, he hopes. So he's not ruled out 100% yet. Uh, interim head coach Rodney Terry also said DeSue is day-to-day. -day, so we're going to have to see what happens when the game tips off at 4.05 tomorrow. From the T-Mobile Center in Kansas City, I'm Jonathan Thomas. Back to you, Noah. Thanks, buddy. Texas a four-point favorite tomorrow. Let's get to match play day four and straight into the quarterfinals. All these guys already won their first match of the day. Sam Burns with shots like this will win his second. Ice is Mackenzie Hughes, who is playing outstanding, and Burns is on to Sunday. Then Texas X Scotty Scheffler. I don't even play golf, but this frustrates me because of how impressive it is. Unbelievable shot here on 17. Nearly holds it with... Another eagle opportunity. He closes out Jason Day. On the other side, it's Rory McIlroy against Xander Shoffley on 18 to win. Ice in his veins. Birdie for Rory. Outstanding for him. He's going to face Cam Young, who closes it out here. We'll be right back with some Texas baseball. All right, to Texas baseball, Kirk Dressendorfer, Jersey retirement today. Texas Tech lost the first game against UT. They were up 3-2 in the sixth. Dylan Campbell says enough of that, my friends. Scores Eric Kennedy to tie the ball game at three. Texas added a couple more. They're up 5-3 in the ninth. Gavin Cash having a heck of a weekend back in Austin. The Texas transfer now with the Red Raiders. Had the homer a night ago. Now ties it down to their last out, 5-5. Five to five. In the bottom half of the inning, it's Porter Brown at the plate. Wild pitch, not the best time for Tech to have that. Come on home, Porter Brown, and they walk it off in exciting style. Texas wins the first two games of the series. That is my name, but Texas did indeed, there we go, win 6-5. to five. You know, never a bad time to get some promo out there. But a good day for baseball today at the Dish, Mr. Kelly. Yeah, it was absolutely fantastic weather this yeah. weekend. I mean, great pool-like weather. Uh, we had uh, temperatures over the course of the past few days kind of fluctuate a bit. The humidity also was a big deal. It's finally gone. Comfortable conditions, but that will all change tomorrow as the humidity kind of returns a little bit. And so do a few spot showers, especially into Monday. Gotcha. Thanks, Sean. And thank you for watching, everybody. See you back here at 10 o'clock.